Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. One, one person's doing well this morning. You know, um, I went to the UTSA football game last night, and it was pretty amazing if you have not had a chance to, to go and see that. Um, what, I, what I was thinking about when we were singing this last song was what one professor uh, at my seminary said. He said, you know, you go to a, a sporting event like football, and there are 22 people on the field desperately needing rest. And then there are 35,000 people in the stands definitely, desperately needing to exercise. And so, you know, it's, it's a reminder that the church is, we can fall into one of those categories. There are some times where we uh, are busy serving and we need a rest. And then there are other times where You've been resting quite a long time. It's time to get in the game. And so uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we actually are going to shift gears. If you have been with us for the last couple of months, we've been working our way through uh, the letter in the Bible called Ephesians. And we're going to just take a pause for that and do something just a little bit different today. Um, and, and this is good. And the reason why it's good is because Sometimes we need to do things a little bit different in forms of worship. In fact, next week, we're going to do something different. We're going to take our worship to Schattenball, and we're going to have a picnic. And the primary focus next week is going to be on fellowship and relationships, because it is possible to come to church every Sunday and say, hi, good morning, hi, good morning, hi, good morning, and never truly get into a biblical, good, healthy, God-honoring relationship. So we're going to try that next week. Uh, today, we're going to do something a little bit different also. We're going to talk about partnering with the gospel. I like this picture. This picture, um, what comes to mind when you see this picture? Just thoughts, random thoughts. Okay, yes. Okay, that's the first thought that came to my mind. Uh, Michelangelo, when he, he drew the hand of God reaching out to man. But what is... What is this, where is the little disconnect, if you will? There's, what, what are the hands not doing? Not well, no, yeah. You might want to go sit in the back row, sir. No, I'm just kidding. No, so they are not touching, right? And, and so often I think we are so close to partnering with God, and yet we, we don't do it. And so today we're going to talk about partnerships. Because all throughout the scriptures, we get a glimpse of partnerships. In fact, if I am honest with this, this myself and this journey, we are celebrating this year, 15 years as a church. Uh, only a few years in this community, but for many years, we met in a coffee shop, and we met in homes, and we met at an elementary school, we met in a fire department. So those are some long years. But more recently, God has really done some amazing things to get us land and a building and added staff. And so, but I can honestly say that we couldn't have gotten here without healthy biblical partnerships in the gospel. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Philippians. And if not, we're just going to focus on this one verse this morning. 
Philippians 1, Paul, again, is writing this letter to uh, a church, just like he was writing to the letter uh, of Ephesians, and the context that he's actually in prison. And so he's going to write this letter to believers, and he's going to encourage them even while he is in prison. And the reason why he can encourage these brothers and sisters in the faith is because they are partnering with the gospel. Look what it says with me in Philippians 1. Paul says this. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion of until the day of Christ Jesus. So uh, there's some key words that I underlined in there. Um, first one is thank God, right? Because we are approaching the season of Thanksgiving, and a lot of times we, we're thankful for a lot of things. But rarely, uh, at least I don't, maybe you do, but rarely do we take time to thank God for the gospel partners that we are partnering with. So he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. And then there's another thing. What does he do? In all my, what does it say? So Paul is constantly thanking God for partnerships, but he's praying for these partnerships. And then the last one is, is because of your partnership in the gospel. Today, uh, we're going to do something different, and you're going to not really hear much from me. And you're going to hear, <laughs> please send that person in the back row. Now, you're a Cowboys fan, so I'm going to let you slide on that one. Uh, but we're going to hear from others. And, and again, this is important. And why is this important? God is always at work. But you and I rarely hear the stories of the work that God is doing. If you turn on the radio, unless it's a Christian radio, if you turn on the radio, your favorite talk show, sports talk, political rant, whatever the case might be, you're not going to hear... God honoring stories of what God is doing. If you turn on to Fox, if you turn on to CNN, you're going to get bad news because bad news gets your attention, bad news sells. You're not going to hear of all the great things God is doing. When you go to school, you're not going to, if you go to the public schools, the principal is probably not going to come over the intercom and tell you all the wonderful things that are going on in the school. Instead, you're going to hear of all the problems that are happening within the school and vandalism and all those things. And yet, God is still doing good things. We just never hear those stories. So when the people of God get together, it's important for us to silence all the negative and hear what God is doing. So today, uh, I'd like to bring up Gonzalo and his wife and introduce them to you. Gonzalo and his wife. Are they there? There you are. <laughs> Daniela, is, would you like to come up too? So I'm going to give you the microphone. Can you sing a song in Spanish for us, please? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So I'm putting him on the spot today. Um, tell me a little bit about your family. There's a picture of you and your wife and your kids. So, yeah, uh, my name is Gonzalo, and she's my wife, uh, Daniela. We are from Chile the last country of South America and yes, yes, I think this is your question? That's my question. Okay, okay, yeah. And currently you're studying where? Um, I'm studying a Baptist University called Baptist University of the Americas. Okay, so here in San Antonio you're studying. Yes. It's in, and you have two yeah. degrees? Yeah, two degrees in music and uh, theology. Music and theology, yeah. okay. So we've met, we have mutual friends that are um, in ministry. And so one of his pastor friends recommended uh, Gonzalo to us because he is looking for an internship next spring. So he's already done one internship. He, he has two degrees, so he's going to do a second internship. So he'll be joining our staff next semester while he finishes up as a pastoral intern. And... Hopefully, Lord willing, we're going to start a Spanish-speaking Bible study. Yes. Yes. Amen. And then hopefully down the road, hopefully down the road, the goal is to turn that 
group into a worship service. Is that correct? Yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cannot wait. Yeah. So we're just gonna we're just gonna pray that God would do what He wants to do in us and through us. And so um, we do have a lot in common. Uh, both of us are fluent in Spanish. And well, <laughs> no, that's the jokes. I got I got jokes. Um, but um, we do have a lot in common because it requires partnership. If we're gonna reach all people for Jesus, and that includes bilingual people, Spanish-speaking people then it requires partnership in the gospel. And so that's my heart's desire for Vista, to partner with you and your family as we move forward into this next year. Is there anything else you want to say since you have the microphone? Uh, just want to say that we are excited that God is doing uh, me in my, in my family. So, yeah, so we are ready for, for start preaching. We already, we have a minister and we are knocking door. So we are preaching to the people uh, of, uh, already. So, so yeah, we cannot wait to start here to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the, in the area in Castroville, like across all the village. Yeah. Go to the yeah. So currently they live off of 410 in Bandera, is that correct? Yeah. And so they have a ministry right now where they, in their apartment complex, they literally go door to door and they're having conversations and they're sharing um, the gospel. And the hope is, and this is where it's going to get a little challenging for us, is because um, this little area is spread out so much. And so we're praying that God would bring us divine appointments to have those conversations. But you're going to need a place to move to eventually to this area, because uh, if you want to definitely partner with the gospel. So we can be praying for that. And then just praying for your family. I know y'all will be heading back to Chile um, this month in you know, you, you want to spend some time with family before the spring semester, so we'll be definitely praying for that. Uh, and if I can tell them, I hear that you're a gifted musician. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I play the guitar. Yeah, he yeah. plays guitar. So that being said, um, I'm going to ask Roger Villa to come up and pray over you all, if that's okay. And would you, again, we're going to be excited to hear stories down the road, but I wanted to at least y'all get a face and a name with this couple. Um, like I said, they will be coming on as pastor interns next year. So, Roger, feel free to bless them and pray over them. Father, you are the God and creator of this world, of all nations. You are the God and creator of people here in this great nation, those who were born here and those who have made their way here. And in whatever way that they arrived, God, you... Uh, desire to extend your love toward them and I thank you God for willing servants to um, to reach out to people of a different language uh, that uh, many in this room perhaps don't understand God but you call people of all tongues of all tribes of all nations uh, not only to follow you but also to proclaim your word God and I pray over Gonzalo and Daniela and over their family as they embark on this journey with us uh, Lord, I thank you because there are people that need to hear your word and about your love in their language, God. And I thank you for this couple, for this family that will be doing that uh, alongside Vista. I pray that you would find us faithful as well as we stand alongside them and walk with them through this journey. So, God, once again, uh, we pray over them that, uh, that you would guide their steps um, along the way. Uh, and as your word has said, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring uh, the word of good news. And I pray, God, that, uh, that we would see that uh, manifest itself, uh, not just in numbers, Lord, but in, in depth of relationship, people coming to you, lives that are transformed, God. And that we would once again just hear choirs of, um, of believers singing to you and praising you in uh, in every tongue we thank you and we lift them up to you god and uh, we look forward to see what great things you will do in jesus mighty name i was hoping roger would have prayed in spanish but it's okay <laughs> thank you guys y'all can i can sit down there is a generational thing that takes place and um 
Roger's dad is a pastor, and Roger's, uh, Roger grew up speaking Spanish, and he was a worship leader and a pastor himself at one time, and he serves faithfully on our worship team from time to time. But um, there, you can see that the next generation needs to hear the gospel. And, of course, uh, they come from a family also of pastors, and so they're pastor's kids, and they met in the church. And so that's a real big heart's desire for them, not only to raise their kids in the church, but to reach other families for Jesus. And so... So I'm going to shift gears just a little bit, and I'm going to play you a video, and then I'm going to introduce to you our next speaker. I always know Medina Valley had a, a, a strong SCA program, so coming here uh, as an assistant, it was you know, something that I got involved in immediately. Uh, you know, Mr. Hundley, who I've known for a long time, you know, he, he wrangled me in, and, and it was we're trying to get things back to the way they, they, they were years ago, but. Uh, for me, you know, God's always played a huge role in where I ended up and what I'm doing, and I want to be able to be an example to my kids, and, and this is one of the best ways I can do that is, is being involved in FCA. I've been to camp four times. FCA has meant so much to me throughout my high school years because it's just like helped me always center myself with Christ, and no matter the drama that's going on or like what's happening around me that's bad and not godly, I know that I still have something to come back to, and that is FCA. Just FCA has changed the way I've approached life. How many kids have we sent to camp? Wow. We probably started about the third year after getting going. And it averaged, it's averaged anywhere from 50 kids to the last 15 years have been 100 to 120 kids a year. And word got out and now it's just, a, it's part of the, the the Dina Valley tradition now with FCA is to go to camp. I have seen FCA do more than impact this school. I've seen it uh, bring some change to a community. I've watched a lot of these kids grow since they were sixth graders. FCA helped me and changed the way I play towards him. Um, I've always played through him, like knowing that thank you for my ability and all that. But like being going to FCA camps and the uh, FCA groups we have in school, me playing for my all no matter what the outcome of the game is just showing him like thank you for everything that you've done i think of it as like pure like going into the little meetings that we have and seeing everybody smile at everybody and being friendly and then coming outside through the hallways you see kids that don't speak to other kids talk to each other like for it to be through the relationship of god or something like that is really amazing change it's a good change um, some of the major highlights from FCA, for one, are, are young men and women giving the arts press. I was playing football, um, not for the right reason, just playing through God, which I later learned um, in my college career after the college advanced weekend. Um, I learned how to play not only for myself, but through Christ. And um, FCA helped me uh, with that, uh, starting my junior high school. I was playing football uh, for other reasons, for, for clout, for... Um, you know, to look good and things of that nature, and um, I'd like to thank FCA because it not only uh, just took that focus away from me to focus it more through Christ, but for myself, and it's made me into a better band today. What we do for Christ is the only thing that lasts. Um, a, fo a great football season is awesome, a great soccer season, baseball season is awesome, but the stories that, that have stuck with the kids that come back from college, that are married now, that are having young children, um, when they are telling me that they're involved in their church and, hey, I'm involved as a youth pastor or this, this, and that, it's because of what started in FCA, Coach Barnes. That, that really does something good to my heart. So be encouraged and don't give up. You still need something else to, to, to keep you going. And uh, Coach Barnes introduced that to me back when I was a junior, when I was 16. And I was young, wild, and I was just, was just trying to get on the football field and, and do whatever, whatever everybody else was doing. And, and it's just... Um, he inspired me to be the person I am now today. Okay, one of my first FCA meetings that I had when I was in high school, um, we went to a home and in that home, of course, we had a bunch of players, football players, volleyball, basketball. And um, the thing that was special is there were coaches there. And our head coach was there, um, Coach D.W. Rutledge. And I got the privilege of sitting next to his wife during our Bible study and um, talking to him afterwards and before. And that kind of really changed my scope of why we do FCA. You know, you can see your coaches and your administrators in a different light, and I feel like they formed the a bond between me and his family that even lives to this day, and I'm very grateful for that experience. 
So I'd like to bring up our next presenter. Is that shown the video? <laughs> I always know Media Valley had a, a, a strong SCA program. So coming the, here, maybe that's uh, my fault. Assistant, it was you know, something that I got involved in immediately. I don't uh, know how to stop you know, it, Mr. Highway. Okay, thank you for somebody stopping it back there. So Stephanie, uh, we have a lot in common. Both of us played professional basketball. <laughs> and, But one of us is telling the truth and the other one's not. I got to be careful around kiddos because they really believe everything I say. So I'm, that was a joke, y'all. I never played. I know it looks like I played basketball, but <laughs> Stephanie, as you want to advance your slides, you just have to tap on it and you can go from there. Good morning. Um, my name is Stephanie Yal, as Pastor James mentioned, and I serve on staff with FCA. Thank you so much for having me this morning. It is such a pleasure to be able to share the good news of what's happening through the ministry of FCA. Um, I have heard, and it's been on my heart constantly, people are saying Jesus is no longer in schools. Has everyone heard that statement? And I want to encourage you and tell you, in fact, he is still in schools through the ministry of FCA, which I'm so thankful to be a part of. So let me see here. Um, I'm first going to just talk to you a little bit about why um, my personal story, my why and why I love and am called to the ministry of FCA. I have played basketball, if you couldn't tell, uh, for 20 years. Um, I played at the collegiate level and I also played professionally um, and just thought really why God was making me go through all these steps was about me, right? It was my career, it was my collegiate career, it was my professional career, that's why I played basketball. So my husband and I uh, got married a couple years ago, and I got into the collegiate coaching world, which I loved. I loved coaching. It was a natural transition from playing to coaching. And God opened the door at UTSA. So go Roadrunners. They're going on a run. Um, but it was in December of 2019, right before COVID hit, um, that God called me out of coaching. And I, it was a dream. I heard God audibly tell me that it was time to step away. And I rolled over to my husband and I said, I think God just called me out of coaching. And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? You are crazy. Let's pray on that first. Um, and so my, my family thought I was crazy. My friends thought I was crazy. But my husband and I spent about three or four months deciding if that was what God was really calling me to. And it was. So I resigned in March of 2020, which was timely with COVID happening. Um, with no idea what was next. I just knew God was calling me out of coaching. So I stepped away and I went through an intense identity crisis. I was not a basketball player. I was no longer a basketball coach, so I didn't know really who I was. I had always known Jesus, um, but it was during those six months that Jesus really worked in my heart and who I was. And it was really then that he's like, no, you're not a basketball player or a coach, you're a daughter of mine. Um, so my husband was like, why don't you look into volunteering with FCA? I had never been involved in FCA before. None of my schools had had FCA. So I reached out to the director in town and just so happened, as God would have it, there was a position open to join staff. So it was all, you just shake your head sometimes like, God, well, how did you have this all planned out, right? Um, because that was not what I had envisioned getting into full-time ministry. But it has been amazing, and I have been so called to this ministry, and now I know why I was a coach and an athlete. It wasn't to play basketball. It was so now I can minister and love to coaches and athletes really, really well. So I am thankful for that. So thank you for letting me share my heart of why I love FCA. And so let me just tell you what FCA does, um, just to encourage you all. So we're in local schools. So Jesus is in local schools. We have the opportunity to walk into schools and reach students and coaches that may never walk into a church. So that's the biggest blessing is some of these kids may not have parents that take them to a church, but they do take them to school. There's so many kids that are involved in athletics. And when we say with a fellowship of Christian athletes, we do not turn people that, that don't play sports away. If you're in the band, if you, you know, do orchestra, if you're involved in theater, you are all invited to FCA. So as a staff member, we are just in comparison, let's say Austin has 30 staff members on staff with FCA in Austin. In San Antonio, I joined and I was the third. So I have 60 schools in my footprint, high schools, middle schools, and I get to serve UTSA, which is a blessing as well, with over 600 coaches and 16 student athletes in my footprint. So there's a lot of impact available and happening in this area. So I just wanted to um, show you as a staff person, my job is to love on coaches well 
and then they in turn launch FCA huddles is what we call them, which is just basically small groups in their local schools. So I just wanna show you um, Medina Valley, what is happening here is not normal in a great way. I went to a Central Texas staff retreat and they were like, where are you serving? I said, you know, Northside, I don't know if this is going here. Northside, uh, Medina Valley, and everyone's like, you get Medina Valley? You get to serve Medina Valley? And I know uh, Robert Hunley and his wife Debbie are here. They have uh, been volunteers for FCA and have launched this for many years. And w the platform that they have set is not normal. It is phenomenal. We went to camp this past summer and they brought a busload of, I don't know, 70, 80 kids and everyone gets on the radio, hey, Medina Valley's here. That is not happening around the state. So we are setting the precedence here and we are setting an example for the rest of the state, which is an awesome thing that God has allowed me to be a part of. So I just wanted to show you and encourage you a few different events that have been happening in the area. So uh, we had a pool party. Are there anybody here, students? I know I saw some FCA students that were at the pool party. Yeah, if you guys can stand up. Yeah, there's a few in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, so you've seen the direct impact of FCA, right? So the pool party um, was in August at Castorville Regional Pool. It was a kickoff to the year of, hey, go to school, look for FCA, what's happening at FCA? And I was able to share a little bit about Jesus there at the end, which is awesome. Um, the next picture here, let me make sure it's working. Okay, so we had a day of champions and as you can see these are high school students so a day of champions is middle school focused so middle school students get to come and high school students get to lead them and so we this was on august 21st it was on the medina valley high school football field it was a saturday morning three hours structured similar to what a mini camp would be like so we played games we had small group time, it was awesome. We had 65 students attend and over 15 local churches, volunteers and church members were there. I know Pastor James was there. And so the good news out of all of that is I didn't really know, you know, again, God just has blown my mind over the past year to be honest. I didn't really know what to expect. We had these students fill out a response card. 65 students were there and 20 proclaimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the first time. So. Amen. <laughs> So that's a picture of the crew after we were all sweaty. It was really hot that day, so. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. So uh, Loma Alta Middle School Huddle. So Coach Sonia and Tony Chop are in the back. If you guys could stand up really quick. Yes. So as an FCA staff person, you dream about individuals like them. Uh, I met uh, Coach Sonia at camp this summer, and when I first talked with her, I was like, this woman's heart is on fire for the Lord and ready to step in at Loma as the lead huddle sponsor. So this is just a picture. This was the first uh, middle school huddle at Loma this year. And I don't know if you got, it was like standing room only. It was amazing. There was 150 students attended. Coach, or uh, Mr. Hunley brings donuts and we like had to start splitting them in half because all these kids kept showing up, which is a phenomenal problem to have. Um, so we got to provide uh, Coach Sonia and Tony 150 Bibles to pass out to their crew. So as you can see in this next picture, this is one small group. <laughs> So there is a lot of people and lots of students that are yearning to hear more about Jesus and this is a great opportunity for them to talk with their, with their peers. Because sometimes a coach or a parent, as you all know, when you talk to your kids, they're like, mm-hmm, yeah, I know, right? But when you have a peer-to-peer -peer conversation, which is what they've done at Loma, they created a leadership team where these students are planning, leading, uh, meeting with Coach Tony and Tony uh, every other week and they are able to lead their, their peers really well, which is awesome. So thank you guys for your commitment and what you're being a vessel for the Lord. I really appreciate you guys very much. This is the Medina Valley Middle School Huddle. Um, Mrs. Veronica Herrera leads that huddle at Medina Valley, and she has a heart for serving and commitment to her students having the opportunity to hear about Jesus and has impacted many already this semester. So as you can see, um, the AD was there speaking, so there is buy-in through the FCA program from the top down, which is an awesome, awesome experience for them. This is at the Medina Valley High School See You at the Pole event. So they, in the morning in September, they all got together and circled around the flagpole and just prayed. 
So it was a public, right? Kids are getting dropped off at school. This is a public, um, public showing of their faith to their peers, to parents, to coaches. And so as you can see, there was quite a few there um, that morning. They are also, so FCA usually, which Medina Valley is not usual, um, serves middle schools and high schools. But these high school students are going to local elementary schools and serving and doing CU at the polls at their elementary schools too. So that's an awesome event where they were able to show their faith publicly. This is the Medina Valley High School Fields of Faith. Was there anybody in here that went to that? You, yeah, okay, I see a few hands going up, awesome. So this was on October 18th, 80 students came. This Fields of Faith happens nationwide uh, through the Ministry of FCA. And we were able to have Aaliyah Henderson come out and speak. She runs track um, at the University of Incarnate Word. So she was able to come share what it really means to be a Christian athlete. And they were able to have more small group time and play some games. So that was an awesome experience too. And this, let me see, it should look familiar. Um, there has been fifth quarters happening around um, Castroville, Medina County um, throughout this year. After Medina Valley High School football team would play, they would host these fifth quarters. So instead of students, you know, going to do other things, we invited them into local churches and we couldn't have done it without the partnership of local churches. And Vista actually hosted one of these fifth quarters, which was awesome. So they come after the football game, 10 to midnight, which for some people is really late, but they came, right, they got to play games. I know they had s'mores, fire, everything else, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just an opportunity for these students to be in fellowship and right, having open conversations about Jesus. And then this is why I do what I do. So these are um, students from different FCA huddles that are praying with their team. So not all those kids go to FCA at their school. So when we say we want to be disciples that are making disciples, FCA is providing these students the platform to be really bold in sharing their faith. And so when they go out into the real world or into their community where maybe Jesus isn't openly spoke about as in their church or in their FCA group, they're able to say, hey, let's pray or hey, let's have open conversations. So we are helping create that next bold Great Commission group of the next generation. So I just want to... Um, I'd again, shake my head at the Lord, but it's just been amazing to see them um, and how they're impacting their peers, coaches, and we've seen these students even go home and impact their parents. We've heard stories about these students finding the Lord and going home and then sharing the Lord with their, and also finding the whole family unit um, coming to know Jesus, which is awesome. So this leads me to why I'm here explaining and how you all can get involved. So again, Mr. Hunley and Mrs. Hunley have done a lot to set the foundation for FCA in our community. Um, and again, I am the first staff member to be um, stationed for Medina County in Northside San Antonio, which I am so blessed and thankful for. Um, but then this leads me to pray, give, go. So what this means, so prayer. We now more than ever need your prayer as we minister and share the word of Jesus to students and coaches continuing to face many, many new things and challenges post COVID. A lot of students are yearning for community. A lot of adults are yearning for community. And so providing this platform of FCA for students to come and be a part of that is a really awesome thing. So the, that leads me to go. So we need volunteers at local FCA events. So I would love for you, those of you that are interested in serving at local events and you know, when you say, well, what are the events? We, have, we always say there's a different place to sit on the FCA bus. So if you want to serve in one capacity, if you want to provide donuts to a local huddle, whatever that may look like, please come see me. I'm going to have a table in the foyer and can talk to you a little bit about that. You can fill out a Connect card just so I have your information and can reach out to you as events start happening if you would like to volunteer. So if you put your name on paper, don't worry, I'm not going to be bugging you every, every few weeks, but I'll be notifying you of different opportunities um, for you guys to serve. So that leads me to the give portion. So. When I first met my director, I knew that I had been called to FCA. And then he said, okay, you're a missionary, you have to raise 100% of your ministry expenses. And I called my husband like, this is it, I'm called to FCA. And then I told him that part and he said, okay, I think we need to pray over that again too. So we did and it's been um, a blessing to see his changed in me. Um, the give portion is the fundraising part and I have seen money impact students directly. And so when I first joined staff, it was hard to ask people for money because I didn't really have an understanding of what that was doing. 
But as you can see from the pictures, that money is moving and it is exploding and providing opportunities to write 150 Bibles or send kids to camp or just do all sorts of different things. Um, so I'd, my ask is if you would prayerfully consider giving financially. Um, so monthly giving is, let's say you give $100 a month, that provides 10 Bibles. Plus it provides opportunities um, such as help sponsor kids to camp, provide additional Bibles and resources, connect them with more local and volunteers, and truly spend more intentional time in Medina County. So as on January 1, I'm praying um, to raise additional $1,200 in monthly gifts. So if 12 families in this room would give $100 monthly, I would be able to then switch into a director position and begin hiring more boots on the ground. So that's my, that's my goal is by the end of December to have $1,200 in monthly gifts raised. So that would be 12 families giving $100 a month. Again, I will have a booth set up in the foyer if you want to um, talk about what that may look like. And I just want to thank you guys so much um, for listening to my heart for the ministry of FCA. And I hope you leave feeling encouraged knowing that Jesus is, in fact, still in schools. And may we praise the fact that we are, have so many awesome volunteers, so many awesome coaches in our local schools that are willing to lead and help their students lead the next generation into the Great Commission of Jesus. So thank you, Pastor James, for having me. Thank Amen. you all for having me. And so we're going to pray for you also. Okay. If I can have Ken Black come up, and he's going to pray. Um, but I, I just want to, you know, like, I like to talk too, so I'll talk a little bit while Ken comes up here. But I, I can totally relate to what you went through with your husband, that conversation, because when we, I felt God calling me to start this church, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm all in. And then I talked to my wife, and she's like, we got to raise support. You know, I'm like, yeah, that's the... But God is faithful, and God has been so good to us on the journey. And then as far as the prayer piece, I would, I would ask you guys to definitely commit to that because there was about four years ago uh, before we built this building, I would go to the football games, and I would hear on the announcers, you know, you know please join XYZ Church as they host the fifth quarter. And I was like, gosh, I wish we could do that someday. And, and you know, and then whenever the new middle school opened up, I was like, Lord, I just wish that you would open up that door so we can get in there. And then here we are, that God has let us host the, the fifth quarter. And Coach Chapa, uh, she's an answer to prayer. Um, she, you know, my daughter filled out a huddle leader application. And, you know, my, Coach Chapa uh, told, told me later, she's like, when I saw her, her application, I said, she's my number one pick. And I was like, that's so cool because sometimes, you know, like in sports, we want to be the number one pick. For different activities but to be picked to be a leader for for christ it's awesome so um, but the partnerships is what we definitely need to be praying for along with the donuts and the giving and everything else too ken would you go ahead sorry and i just want to encourage you i was actually just talking with them uh the chapas before service right and you're like well how does the students go from fca to school to fca to church right because we have students that say yes i'm all in for jesus and then it's like well what's next that's the portion where I get to come in and say, like they were just saying, we need, this church is five miles, did we decide, from Loma. So when these students are accepting Jesus, we need to provide them the opportunity to get plugged into a local church, and that's my job. So they were saying, let's put a flyer out that says, hey, Vista's five miles, why don't you come hang out here? So it's just not that we're doing it at school and we're keeping an arm's length. No, I am the person, and Jesus is working through me and through others in the community to have it at the local school, yes but then pull them into the local churches and get really involved in a local family. So that's, that's the portion of true partnership, which I'm thankful that you guys are here. So thank you. Again. Amen. <laughs> Ken? I just want to make it clear I don't play basketball. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, this young woman is uh, such an inspiration to me because she's given up so much. And she won't say that, but she has. She's given up so much to be your vessel, to be your representative. Lord, and I, I praise her and I praise these volunteers who are giving their time and their energy for you. But that's what you ask of all of us. And Father, we look around this room and we see people of all ages and we are all being affected by the 
culture that is not in your court. Lord, reaching this next generation is so important. Stephanie is in a unique position to lead that effort in Medina Valley. And I just pray that you will watch over her and her family, that you will bless them, that you will bless the volunteers who serve. Father, I just look around this room and I see so many young people that need you. And I pray that they will be drawn to, to you through Stephanie and this ministry. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have at Vista Community Church to partner with FCA. May you receive all the glory. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. All right. Last but not least, we have another video.
I'm going to have Cindy come up, and Cindy Martinez is going to share a little bit with you about our partnership with New Beginnings. Should be live. There you go. Hey, guys. I brought notes because I get off on a tangent a little bit. So my name is Cindy. Um, man, I'm blind. All right. Huh. Well, we have been partnering with New Beginnings for... A little over three years now. Um, when we first went out there, you know, we, a group of us went over to moms, and we had this idea that we were just going to go over there and help them, and we were going to be a blessing to new beginnings. Well, we were met at the door by Tammy, who you guys will meet a little bit later, and uh, she said, well, blow your world, tiger. She said, uh, come out here in the foyer and talk to me, and we sat on couches, and we were like, yeah, okay, we're ready. And she said, uh-huh. All right, well, you don't get to meet the kids, but tell me your thoughts. And we're like, what? So we told her, well, you know, we're from a local church, and we really want to be a blessing, and we're, we feel called. Um, three years later, guys, I can tell you, they're the blessing. We are blessed. Oh, I'm going to start crying. All right. Let me tell a little bit about what we do. You saw some of the stuff on the video. We have a karaoke night. We get this karaoke machine that I borrow from my neighbor. I was just going to ask, does everyone know what New Beginnings is? Because maybe some people don't know what no? New Beginnings is. All right. It's a children's home right up the road. It's about maybe 10 minutes from here, 15 minutes from mm -hmm. here. It's a group home. Right now, currently, there's 11 kids who, um, who live there. And uh, Tammy is... Program administrator, yes, got that right. And um, they provide a home for these kids. These kids live there. They take the kids to school, take the kids to work, you know, homework, discipline. Everything you do as a mom and dad, except they do it on a bigger scale. So um, that's New Beginnings. Um, I don't even know how they got, they got on James's radar and James said, hey, you ain't got nothing going on. Let's see what's going on. So just, I'll just share real quick. Um, I've always had a heart for fostering. And so this is a group home in our community. And so one of the things that I've always wanted to do with Vista is partner. And so we found out that there was a need in this local community. And so I shared with Cindy. And then Cindy's been just running with it from there. And the joke is, is that I don't give her green lights. I give her yellow lights. She just runs through the yellow lights. And so... Well, what does yellow mean? It yeah, means, yeah, hmm? yeah. So, but, but we're you very blessed to partner. But go ahead and tell us a little bit more about New Beginnings. Well, I'm going to tell you some of the stuff that we do, guys, honestly, because um, otherwise I'll just start crying. Um, we, have, we hang out. We do karaoke nights. And my neighbor has this really cool karaoke machine that lights up. And we do flashlights. And we sing songs. And... Eventually, the staff has to put our names so we could take turns. And, um, and then they also have to say, okay, last song, no more, go home. It's late because it's three hours in and we're still there. Um, we all saw we had movie night where we took the projector and the popcorn machine, food, candy, lots of fun. And we watched a, a movie under the stars with the kiddos. And that was so special because it's there at their house. Like you have movie night with your kids at home. We had it at their home with them and had just an amazing night. Um, they brought their blankets out, and um, you saw even with these relationships that we build with these kids, I mean, you really do start feeling love. I then understood why Tammy was like, slow your roll, girl. You ain't meeting anybody. She's protecting her babies. And I feel like that about these kids. Um, but we do build relationships with the kiddos you saw. One of them even got baptized right here a couple years ago. Um, we support them in the graduations um, with COVID. There was, uh, you know, parade, or what are they called? Parades? Parades. Graduation parades. And you saw that we went and loved on Diamond for a little while. Um, Josh, Josh Reed, back there, he does the Stuff the Van. Um, their budget, guys, is so small. And you know how with a family, you have to have a budget and I just can tell you that the staff pays for a lot of stuff out of pocket. So Josh had this amazing idea, him and his family, to um, do stuff the van. And they, every winter, they have this event. You know, and it's 
really awesome and you just stuff the van you bring paper goods toilet paper paper towels soap detergent josh what am i missing just stuff and it's all donated to them so then they can use those funds to get other things the kids need um so these these are just like the tips of the different things that we do um and in this building of relationships guys um the winter storm anybody lose power yeah water so did they and we had a couple families here step up bring these kids into their home and give them warmth and food and showers while the home you know while tammy and the staff over there try to fix you know these families had these babies with them and it was just such a sweet sweet time to be able to love on them and show that this church is a, is real we are we have the biggest hearts i like there's a million churches out there, but I feel like our church is the one with the big heart. And we love on these babies. Um, my daughter used to work for Bubba's 33. And one night we were there having dinner. And the partner, managing partner, walks by. And I said, hey, you know, how you doing? Whatever, small talk. And I said, hey, uh, do you ever sponsor kids? He said, yeah. I said, oh, OK. So I started, you know, <laughs> you know convincing him convincing him that it would be a great idea to bring the kids for lunch on Christmas Eve because honestly when you talk to Tammy you'll find out this season is the worst season in the world for these children just a constant reminder that they're not with their moms and dads they're not with their families so I said you know hey Joe and he I said we can even do like a condensed menu you know nothing too expensive nothing too crazy and he says why not and I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? He goes, why don't we just let them pick whatever they want off the menu? And I thought, that's a great idea. So I start crying because that's my go-to emotion. I'm like, <laughs> yes, that's great. But anyway, we did. We, you know, they brought the kids. The kids got to pick anything off the menu they wanted inside the restaurant. And he covered the entire cost. And he did it again. And he's going to do it again. Like, that's just amazing that... Our love for these children moves people. And it definitely moves me. And if any of you all have been out there or hung out with these kids, you know. You know how your hearts just bleed over. Um, there's so many, there's so much need. But the greatest need is prayer right now for these babies. Um, I know with Christmas coming, Everybody, I'm not going to, we're not this year going to be raising or giving gifts. This year, what we want to do, um, a couple months ago, I think the three of us met, Tammy James and me, and um, Tammy mentioned that there is this Christmas, Thanksgiving season, every organization wants to donate. Everybody wants to help. And they do, they come in big ways, and they come and they give gifts and they love on these kids for December. But January comes, February, April, May, June, and then no one's there. So this time, this year, Vista, what we're gonna do is we're going to pray. There's two kind of funky little trees out there with ornaments. There's three ornaments, let's see, how can I say Three ornaments for each child that is currently living at New Beginnings. And on those ornaments, there's a little piece of paper rolled up with their specific prayer request. So you guys, if, there's a lot of need, but this one is great. Please, if you feel called to want to love on one of these babies, and they're all middle to high school. I say babies, right? Because I'm 21. And um, <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> Your jersey says 21, oh, but that's that. oh, I think that's... Okay. that's <laughs> oops. Um, grab an ornament, take it home, open it up with your family, and pray for that child. Pray their prayer. It's written exactly how they wrote it, so if it's grammatically wrong, that wasn't me. Um, what we thought would be better is in summer, Vista will do Christmas in July with the kids. Right now, our focus for this church with those kiddos is going to be prayer. 
prayer because this season hurts if your family's not with you. Anybody's lost anybody, you know that. It hurts. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a tangible way for you guys, for our church, to partner with the kiddos. And we want to keep growing um, this partnership. Um, if you guys have questions, Tammy is here and after church. Right. I was going to say, you're going to meet somewhere in the corner? Yeah, right, right in here somewhere. Okay. So she can, um, you have questions about the home, about things about new beginnings. She is here to be able to answer those questions. I can talk to you about some of the fun stuff we did. I didn't, talk, I didn't touch a lot of this stuff, but because I'll be here forever talking. Um, but if you have come out, if you have participated, if you have loved on these kids, I want to thank you from the very bottom of my heart. It's, there's a lot of turnover, right? The kids come in, and then they get moved or placed out. And you fall in love, and you want to love these babies, and then you go next week, and they're not there anymore, and there's a new baby to love. So the need doesn't stop just because we've clicked another month. It's always, always perpetual. So please, um, questions, please come ask me. Please come talk to Tammy um, in prayer. You guys want to be intentional? This season, there's those ornaments. Guys, my daughter went and bought them. I told her to get me, but I didn't say plastic, so they're glass ornaments. So just be careful. Don't drop them. So I would just say that the goal is partnership. Our, yes. And we're, we're trying to bring awareness to that this ministry is something we've been doing for three years. And so Cindy's really been the, the catalyst and the connection piece, but we want to build a team around her because once a month there's relationships to be built from the church and with these kids. And again, just like any, any teen or any person, we don't need more stuff. We need healthy relationships. And so that's where the church can really partner with FCA or with um, New Beginnings or whatever ministry is that healthy God-honoring relationships is what we're after so that Jesus will be shared in that story because Jesus is the one that's going to change it all, not anything we do, but God. And so we're just messengers. So that being said, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to have the worship team come up and we'll close with the last song. Outside, again, there's going to be two booths set up. If you want more information about the FCA, there's a booth, and some of those leaders will be there. And then also that ornament tree. Pick one of those. Pray for these kids because this is what they need the most. Um, God will provide. He always does. But what we need to do is partner in the gospel and pray. So let me just pray for you in this ministry, and I'll have the worship team come up. Father, we love you, and I love you. Thank you for this church. This, this, this is your body and God, we have so many different skill sets and gifts, and, and some have time, and some have um, talent, and some have treasures, and um, Lord, we all want to be a part of the work. We don't just want to sit and, and listen. We want to let the gospel not only change us, but allow us to be your hands and feet to help others. And so, Lord, we just lift your name on high. We pray over new beginnings. We pray over this, um, the, the kids that are there, and we pray for their families. And, Lord, we just pray that you would redeem those stories, and, Lord, they would be, this would be the start of a new beginning for them, Lord, because you, Jesus, are, are making all things new. And we lift up to you, FCA, again, and for Gonzalo and his family and all the other ministries that are represented here at Vista. There's so many to highlight, but we just leave them at your feet. To you be all the glory, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.